This episode, along with hundreds of others from Calaroga Shark Media, is available without commercials. Just look for the banner on your Apple Podcast app to subscribe and try it free for a month. Calaroga Shark Media. Hello and welcome to Palace Intrigue. I am your host, Mark Francis. Megan flew solo for California before landing at Heathrow. She reunited with Harry at the airport's VIP Windsor Suite. They then boarded an overnight flight to Nigeria, but that flight was slightly delayed after the scheduled pilot went sick. A replacement was found. The Express reports the Sussexes were seated in the first-class section of the Boeing 777 and were separated from other passengers by a curtain. When they touched down in Nigeria at 5 a.m., fellow passengers were reportedly held back so the couple could be escorted off the aircraft. The Express adds that Harry and Meghan also exchanged smiles with cabin crew as they disembarked. Arriving in Abuja, Nigeria's capital, for a three-day visit after being invited by the Chief of Defence staff in relation to the Invictus Games, Megan also has a personal interest in the country as she discovered through a genealogy test that she is 43% Nigerian. The couple's first stop was the Lightway Academy, where they launched a two-day mental health summit run by the non-profit Gene Co., which is linked to their Archwell Foundation. Dressed in light clothes and wearing large wooden beaded necklaces, Harry and Meghan were serenaded by singers and dancers and greeted with hugs and a welcome banner fringed with flowers reading, We are honoured to have you. Megan was impressed by a performer who did a backflip in front of her, which got a bravo from the host of a Netflix cooking show. Although they did not bring their children, Archie and Lilibet, on the trip, they spoke about them while meeting kindergarten children at the school. Our son Archie's five. He turned five last week, Megan said after being introduced to a five-year-old. She also shared that Archie enjoys construction. During the mental health summit, Megan spoke about their daughter, saying, And interestingly, so our daughter Lily, she's much, much tinier than you guys. She's about to turn three. And a few weeks ago, she looked at me and she would just see the reflection in my eyes. And she was, Mama, I see me in you. Oh, now she was talking really, literally. But I hung on to those words in a very different way. And I thought, yes, I do see me and you and you see me and you. But as I look around this room, I see myself in all of you as well. As they were introduced on stage at the summit, Megan said to Cheers, We're so honoured to be with you. Harry then addressed the crowd, asking, If I say mental health, do you know what it means? It's something that we are all still relatively unsure of. But guess what? Every single person in this room, the youngest, the oldest, every single person has mental health. So therefore, you have to look after yourself to be able to look after other people. And other people have to be able to look after themselves, to look after you. That's the way it works. And there is no shame to be able to acknowledge that today is a bad day, okay? If you woke up this morning feeling sad, if you left school feeling stressed, if you've lost a loved one in your family who you usually turn to or speak to, all of these things you may be led to believe are not for conversation. We are here today to tell you that this is not the case. Every single one of these things is completely normal. Megan praised her husband's words, saying, You see why I'm married to him? She also expressed her pride in visiting Nigeria, stating, It is a complete honour to have our first visit to Nigeria. Be here with all of you. We believe in you. We believe in your futures. We believe in your ability to continue to tell your stories and to just be honest with each other. There is no need to suffer in silence. Just make sure that you are taking care of yourselves and that you begin with your mental health by really talking about whatever's coming up for you. The Sussexes also visited a STEM class where a group of children showed them some robot cars they'd created for an upcoming exhibition. Megan promised that we will have to come back for the exhibition. Today, the couple will attend a training session for the organization Nigeria Unconquered and a reception hosted by the Chief of Defense staff in honor of military families. Megan will also co-host a Women in Leadership event with the Director General of the World Trade Organization. Harry will watch a volleyball match between the Chief of Defense's staff team and Harry's own team. Perhaps he could ask his brother to play on his team. William had been spotted playing beach volleyball earlier in the week and got him all his serves in. Tomorrow, the couple will attend a basketball clinic with Giants of Africa, a cultural reception, and a polo fundraiser for Nigeria Unconquered. More Palace Intrigue in just a moment. The very, very busy Prince William revealed he had been out for a morning swim as he grabbed some pastries. The future king, who didn't meet with his volleyball-watching brother this week, also shared an update on Kate, saying she is doing well. 
William enjoyed the traditional Cornish pasties on sale on the Key Cafe in St. Mary's Harbour on Friday, spending £27.50 for five of the pasties, one for each family member. Royal expert Tom Quinn of the Mirror said, King Charles' announcement that Prince Harry is being stripped of his role as Colonel-in-Chief of the Army Air Corps is a real kick in the teeth for the son who always felt marginalised and underrated. What makes it much worse is that the role has been given to the very man who Harry sees as the cause of so many of his problems, his brother. And the announcement was deliberately made during Harry's brief visit to the UK to have maximum impact. It shows Harry that he really is no longer welcome. According to royal commentator Phil Dampier, he is said to have been in tears when he heard. But they have decided the gloves are off and that Harry needs to realise that when you betray the family, you don't just escape the things you hated doing as a working royal, you also lose the things that you loved. Being colonel-in-chief of the Army Air Corps was something Harry really did enjoy and of which he was very proud, Dampier stated. He described a rushed feel with the role of being transferred to Prince William on May 13th, saying, as if they can't wait to be rid of this troublesome prince. Harry feels his time in the military was a rare happy time in his life when he was judged on his merits as a man, not on his merits as a member of the royal family. Having always hated being the spare in terms of the succession, he now finds that one of the few important roles he had as the younger brother has now been handed over to the person Harry himself described as his nemesis. Harry cannot fail to get the message. His last few ties to his old life are being cut and he is being set adrift permanently. Earlier in the week, Harry and Meghan chose to celebrate Archie's fifth birthday with a low-key family gathering rather than releasing a new photo of their eldest child, diverging from the recent royal tradition of sharing birthday portraits. While royal fans eagerly awaited a glimpse of Archie on his special day, the parents opted for privacy, hosting a family party at their home instead. Although the couple refrained from sharing a new picture of Archie, a California-based balloon company, Ventura County Balloons, offered a peek into the celebration by sharing a photo of a colourful, custom-made balloon arrangement featuring Archie's name. The cheerful display hinted at the festivities enjoyed by the young prince surrounded by his family. Royal expert Tom Quinn told The Mirror, When it comes to her children's birthdays, Meghan is almost obsessed with the idea that they should be quiet, very private affairs, with simple games, a birthday cake and ice cream. Quinn told us, Archie is a real live wire who loves rushing around at top speed so there will also be blind man's bluff and tag among other games. Megan combines a deep sense of her own global importance in the wider world with a desire to make her children experience what she sees as the more ordinary things in life. And there you have it. If you'd like to email us, our address is thepalacentury at gmail.com. Please follow us on Spotify, Apple, write reviews, hit those five stars if you like the show, and subscribe through the Apple app if you want to get this episode commercial free, along with the Deep Crown stuff. I'm Mark Francis. My thanks to John McDermott. This is Palace and Dragon. Good times. Good times.